Hi. One of the first decisions when you are planning a new aquarium is about its inhabitants. This is very important to consider at the planning stage what animals you want, because many future decisions will depend on the type of the invertebrates and fish kept in the aquarium. In this episode, I will be talking about how to choose fish to run a healthy marine tank. Probably the biggest criterion influencing the decision regarding the types of fish is the size of your tank. Obviously, having a large tank gives the owner a lot more flexibility in choosing fish to inhabit it. Unfortunately, most of the home marine aquaria have only a couple of hundred litres of volume. And in that case, a proper planning could help you to avoid some potential issues like diseases or high lethality of your fish. The worst you can do is to buy a fish without any research on its biology or behaviour. Unfortunately, this scenario is pretty common. A beginner aquarist who just had his tank cycled came to a local fish shop to buy some fish, but he fell in love with a real beauty spotted in the display tank. So he bought it only to find out that he bought beautiful but poisonous lionfish. This is an extreme example, but it was a real situation. Thankfully, nothing dangerous happened and he returned the fish to the shop. So before you buy any fish for your aquarium, you need to consider a few things in order to be able to make a right choice. Let me help you with some key points to consider. In the natural environment, on coral reefs, the space available for fish is virtually unlimited and offers many hideouts. In the home aquarium, fish don't have that comfort due to the size of the tank and not enough of the life rock. Larger aquaria give us more flexibility with the rock aquascaping. More rocks mean more hideouts and more space for tiny organisms being a natural food for many fish and corals. Unfortunately, most of us has a limited space and budget, therefore the affordability is a main criterion here. But there is nothing wrong with having a small nanocube as long as we are aware of its limitations. It is very common that in nature fish grow much bigger than in a home aquarium. So whenever you do a research, consider the size of the fish in the natural environment. The great example here are lipstick tanks, which can reach up to 50 centimeters in the natural environment. In the limited space of small aquaria, they get stunted and stop growing, which can cause stress and deformations. And lipstick tank in 500 liters won't grow bigger than several centimeters. Large fish in the small aquarium can also break corals or simply hurt themselves. And after all, this hobby is about well-being of the inhabitants of the fish tanks. Some fish can be really aggressive towards another fish. This happens usually within the same species and the same sex, but also towards a fish with a similar coloration and the shape. The aggression can have different levels from the occasional demonstration of muscles up to the fight for the life and death. The most often situation is when the stronger fish torments the weaker one. Unless the stressor gives up, the weaker fish will most likely starve to death hiding in the rocks. This behavior is often a feature of the surgeon fish, like yellow tongue, line surgeon fish, or orange shoulder tongue. Sometimes the aggression is limited to a particular space of the tongue. In that case, the fish can be peaceful until another fish comes too close. Surprisingly, this behavior can be also seen with small fish like damsels. They can protect their nests by attacking even much larger fish, not mentioning the aquarist's hand. In a small home aquarium, the fast swimming fish with dominating nature generally should not be kept with the shy and slower species if they are food competitors. This means that if they share the same type of food, the dominant fish will always snap the floating food first, leaving less or no nutritious leftovers. In the larger tanks, it shouldn't be a problem, but it is always a good idea to introduce the more dominant fish to the aquarium as last, giving at least a couple of weeks to the peaceful fish so they can settle down and feel more confident. I've already mentioned that some conflicts may arise around the food competition, 
when some fish are faster and bigger than the others. In that case, it is always good to feed the fish in both ends of the aquarium and to provide the food in different sizes. The larger fish will usually pick up the bigger chunks in the first place, leaving the smaller bits for the smaller fish. Alternatively, you can provide the food in the place where the larger fish will have difficulties to get to, for example behind the rocks. This way the smaller fish will get there first. Another problem you may face is that some fish may be very difficult to switch to the frozen or dry food. This can happen, for example, to mandarins. If you decide to keep them in the aquarium, make sure you are able to provide the natural food like copper pots. This can take a long time, but there is a chance that they will finally switch to the frozen food. When we are talking about the food, I need to mention one more thing. Some fish, despite willingness of eating the frozen or dry food, can suddenly follow the instinct and feed on the other invertebrates in the aquarium. It can happen with butterfly or filefish, which can easily eat some of your LPS corals or even clams. So when you decide to introduce, for instance, copper bands, make sure you are aware of the risk to other inhabitants of your reef tank. As you can see, it is important to make a research on every fish you want to introduce to your aquarium, because wrong choices can cause you some troubles. I understand that beginner aquarists have many temptations when they visit the local fish shop. But let's be honest, they can't buy everything and they have to make some decisions. Obviously, in most cases, the decision to buy or not to buy depends on whether we like the fish or not. But I would recommend you to consider also the fish's function in the aquarium. What do I mean by that? Each marine aquarium is some kind of self-developing reef ecosystem and can have some issues with nuisance algae, coral eating nudibranch slugs, flatworms, or white spot disease. Most of these troubles can be fixed or at least reduced by keeping right fish in the tank. But the point is that adding these fish too late might be ineffective, so I suggest to consider keeping them in the aquarium as the standard fish crew. This way, they may prevent some problems from occurring. I can give you a couple of examples. To control the expansive Aptasia anemones, you can keep filefish that are known to feed on Aptasia. They can however nip some LPS polyps, so be aware that they may not be 100% reef safe. Although they are not particularly handsome, they can greatly control the population of Aptasia in your tank. To keep your sand clear, you can use sand shifting goby, a fish that chew the sand, constantly stirring it and removing the excess detritus. Although they can scatter sand over corals, they can help you to keep it clean. You have probably heard about the doctor ras, which can feed on some parasites living on fish. This is a pretty cool fish to watch when busy with its treatments. Doctor ras won't prevent a serious white spot outbreak, but can definitely support you with the minor infections. Banana ras or six line ras are also great support to your fish tank. They are beautifully colored and they can control population of Montipora eating nudibranch or flatworms, which both can be very frustrating. Although there are effective chemicals to fight them, it is always better to use natural solutions. The natural solutions to reduce or to control the nuisance algae are herbivorous fish like tanks. Most of them require a rather larger aquarium, but one small yellow tank or coolie tank can be kept in 300 liters. It will constantly graze on rocks, reducing the algae growth. These are only few examples of the useful fish that can support you in running a healthy marine tank. There are many more, but each of them has their own pros and cons. And this is your responsibility to do a research on them to make sure they fit your idea for the aquarium. Once you picked up your working fish, providing your aquarium is large enough, then you can think about the other fish that will make your aquarium look stunning. And whenever you have a choice, please think about the captive bred species because as responsible aquarists, we want to reduce the impact on the natural resources. This is it for today. If you like this, please subscribe to my channel so you will never miss any episodes. Thank you for watching and see you soon.